What's going on guys, Enzo here. Welcome back to another reaction video. Today I'm going to be checking out another video from Anna Solves. This one is called The Schoolgirl Who Went Who Spent 44 Days in Hell. Let's not waste no time. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you do, remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see some more content like this. Also, if you see me eating something, they're Chia Bondi flips. I love these things. No, they're not sponsoring this video at all, but I had to give them a shout out. These things taste amazing. Imagine if someone saved you from a scary attacker and then offered to walk you home. Surely you'd see them as a total hero, right? Well, in this famous and upsetting case from the 1980s, a pretty Japanese teenager with a bright future at first believed that a white knight had rescued her from a very scary person. Here we Unfortunately, go. her rescuer was someone truly nightmarish, mm -hmm. and she'd spend the next 44 days at the mercy of a huge group of complete monsters. Here we go. So, here's what happened. Now, you might be more familiar with Japan as the home of delicious ramen. Lost in translation, mm, samurai, ramen. and Pokemon. But like anywhere else, it has a really dark side too. And nothing shows that better than this extremely shocking case. On January 23rd, 1989, the police of Misato in Japan had picked up two despicable teenagers for questioning. Hiroshi mm. Mayano and Joe Agura had allegedly violated a woman in her no, late I heard teens. That before. And they were now even more suspicious because the cops had found women's underwear at their homes. The investigators <laughs> also wanted to know if Hiroshi was connected to a double homicide of a woman and her little son. But Hiroshi thought that the cops were accusing him of something else entirely. He also thought that Joe had confessed about this, so wow. he told the cops where to find a body that was in Tokyo. Wow. The cops traveled to Tokyo to see if this claim was true, but what they discovered there in a big drum container filled with concrete would shock everybody for a long time to come. It was the That's body crazy. of a missing teenager, and she was the, the last concrete? person anyone would expect to be mixed up with a total creep like Hiroshi. Junko Furuta was almost too good to be true. As a middle child with two brothers, she worked hard at school and kept up excellent grades. She didn't drink and always refused drugs. She had a pretty great job lined up for when she left school at a plastics molding factory where she already worked in the evenings. She was also very pretty, but she just wasn't interested in any of the attention caused by her attractiveness. Different sources suggest that this led to Hiroshi, who apparently went to the same school as Junko and tried to ask her out. And mm. when he was rejected, well, it wasn't good. The trouble is some guys really don't like to be told no. And Hiroshi took Yanku's rejection very personally. So this has been called a possible reason behind everything that happened to Yanku next. But Hiroshi already had a really horrible reputation. There was a very good reason why the cops picked him up in 1989. He was already a disgusting person then, and the people he hung out with were just as bad. But wow. what he and his friends ended up doing to poor Yanku definitely made them into monsters. Terrifying On trip. November 25th, 1988, Yunko was innocently riding her bike along some back streets after a day at high school when a total weirdo kicked her over. Just as things looked bad for her, Hiroshi Miyano appeared and seemed to rescue her. Once Hiroshi appeared, the weirdo what? immediately ran away and Hiroshi offered to walk Yunko home, you know, to make sure she was safe on those back streets. But that would be the last time anyone ever saw her alive. So because it was just bad. this weirdo jump. was actually Minato, one of Hiroshi's three friends. I mean, they hung out as a Oh, game. so they planned and that, okay. with Yunko's bike was all part of a yep. sick trap to capture her. What they did to her next was unbelievably you. horrifying. Runaway school. By November 27, 1988, Yunko's mom and dad were incredibly worried about their responsible, reliable daughter. They must have been even more shocked when they received a phone call from her, and she told them that she had run away. She was staying with oh, friends so they really and not this. to worry. Yunko insisted that they stop the police from looking for her. Even though I think that sounds really out of character, her parents did what she said, and the police also dropped the search for her. But of course, <sighs> the truth behind that phone call was so much worse because Yunko had been kidnapped by four totally evil men. You probably have a pretty good idea about what they would have wanted her 
for. As Hiroshi had walked her home, he in fact led her to a disused warehouse. He told her not to fight back because he was part of the Japanese gang called the Yakuza. Now, he and his friends were involved with Yakuza, but only as very low-ranking Chimpira. Even so, they were being scary enough to terrify poor Yunko into doing whatever they wanted. They also threatened wow. to hurt her family if she didn't obey them. At first, Hiroshi had done awful things to her in that warehouse where he led her. And then, in a hotel close by, he'd called a friend to visit and even boasted about what he was doing. Hiroshi and his Chinpara buddies had already had a disgusting habit of frequently kidnapping and violating random women together. Eventually, Hiroshi forced Yunko to come to an apartment belonging to his buddy Shinshi Minata's parents. Those parents would actually drop by and visit their equally wow. terrifying son. Even though his mom and dad clearly saw what was happening to poor That's Yunko, trifling. they never dared to lift a finger to help. In some ways, I really can't blame them. The four guys were absolutely brutal and seemed to have no empathy or humanity whatsoever. They That's began trifling. to bring other gangsters to see and use poor Yunko sometimes as many as 12 a day. But although that was bad enough, it was what else they began to do to her constantly, all day long, that makes this case the most horrifying. They used weird objects on her. They did things that were so inhuman that it doesn't seem physically possible for anyone to inflict it on another person. And the situation only got worse for her each day. A film from 2004 called Concrete is closely based on Fertura's horrible wow. experience and graphically shows what she went through. So if you're curious for more details, no, that's no. one place to look. There are also at least three books about this case and a manga adaptation called Seventeen Sai, which is loosely based on Yunko's story. But I can wow. say that these monsters forced Yunko to eat live cockroaches, starved her, eventually only giving her a little milk to survive on. She was made to inhale lighter fluid, smoke lots of cigarettes at once, and the men used worse and worse objects to inflict complete agony. They constantly wow. humiliated her too, and I can't even begin to understand how they could do any of it. It's so incredibly sick. Those visits from other twisted gang members continued to happen until she became too disfigured for even them to stand looking at her. She was slowly becoming destroyed, but somehow Yunko just kept on living. Although she That's probably knew you. she couldn't survive this treatment for much longer. She probably understood that she had to make a break for it and escape. And at one point, she had exactly that chance if she could be brave enough. Go. On the 20th day since they'd taken Yanko off the streets, the four day. sickos were in a drunken stupor at Minato's apartment after a long night of drinking and partying. For a little while, those monsters had no idea what was going on, and nobody was keeping watch on her. Despite how horribly injured she already was, Yanko bravely seized Man. that one chance to get help and escape. With what must have been a lot of effort and courage, Yanko was able to get to a phone. She immediately tried to call the police. Unfortunately, hey. one of those inhumane sickos must have woken up at the worst moment. He stopped Yunko before she could finish making that vital call. And of course, she was even more badly punished for trying to do that. Injuries, including those inflicted by setting lighter fluid on fire, meant she could barely walk anymore and had to crawl around the apartment. For the next 20 this days, crazy, Yunko just yeah. kept getting weaker and weaker. Soon, she could barely walk or move, and the constant injuries what, were making her body shut down altogether. Because of her brutal internal injuries, she couldn't even eat without throwing up. The sickos also made her sleep out on the balcony wow. in the middle of winter. Frankly, it's amazing she survived as long as she actually did. As it seemed unlikely Man, they'd it, ever free her, and her health got crazy. worse and worse, she would demand that they simply end it or get it over with, but she wouldn't be released from yeah, her torment until torture. she did something pretty remarkable. Okay, we gotta pause really quick, man. This is a wild story. We're only like eight minutes in. I'm gonna let this part play out, but this is wild, guys. I'm gonna get this little thing off the screen really quick. I don't know what this is. Okay, there we go. And play. On 
January 4th, 1998, these monsters okay. challenged her that was to a year game before of I was Mahjong born. Solitaire. And Yunko completely beat them at it. Think about that. Despite all of the horrible That's injuries, crazy. violations, and trauma, despite everything she had been put through, she was still smart enough to defeat them. I mean, it could have been a total trick on their part, but she still won, which they weren't happy about at all. Right, that victory, course. though satisfying, just led to two hours of very intense pain and unimaginable torture. I can't even get into it here, it's so bad. By the time they'd finished hurting her, she was far too gone to even react to the pain. At the end, they used heavy dumbbells to hurt her until she stopped moving entirely. While wow. it was a final escape from the agony for her, it completely panicked the four evil freaks. See, even oh, now they're Lisa panicked. aren't totally safe from the cops, and these losers were only on the lowest level. Now, they had a very incriminating body to deal with. And, I mean, I'm not sure what they'd expected to happen to her after all that tormenting, you know? They really weren't too bright, but they definitely were cruel, sadistic, and in serious need of suffering some consequences. So, now desperate to hide the evidence, after 24 hours, they hid wow. poor Yunko's lifeless body inside a 55-gallon oil drum. Then, they filled it with wet concrete. They disposed of this in Kodo City, wow. near Tokyo. And as you know from earlier in the video, that's exactly right. where the police found her. They would retrieve Yunko and return her home in January 1989. But, could law enforcement ever prove who was behind this horrific wow. discovery. While the authorities figured out how to make a case against the four monsters, Yunko's friends, family, and classmates were trying to come to terms with her unbearable last hours alive. In total, she'd suffered for between 40 and 44 days. I was gonna say, that was definitely over a month. Wow. And his friends. At Yunko's funeral, one school friend wrote, You must have been in so much pain, so much suffering. We will never forget you. Young Chan, there is no more pain no more suffering please rest in peace she was buried in a happy reason. coat which is kind of a traditional japanese robe it had been designed by her classmates the factory where she would have worked also donated an honorary uniform as a tribute and wow. yunko's high school presented her graduation certificate to her grieving parents nothing could make up for what had happened to her. But surely the courts would make sure that Yunko's disgusting and they thought the parents thought that she ran away. behind bars for a long time. Now, the four attackers had underestimated just how much uh, evidence was left on and around Yunko's body and in that drum full of concrete. The police were eventually able to build a very convincing case against them. Because the four men were minors at the time of their crime, they weren't supposed to be named in the media. But one magazine was so outraged by their actions that their names were widely Dang. released. The whole of Japan was distraught about what had been done to Yunko. And for this kind of horrendous crime, you'd think that the judge would like throw the book at all of them. A really, really big book. But don't hold your breath. At the trial, the four monsters only pled guilty to committing bodily injury that resulted what? in death. Um, I think it was a lot worse than that. In July 1990, Hiroshi Miyano received the longest sentence, 17 years in prison. Miyano's mom Bro. also had to sell the family home to pay a huge amount of compensation to Yunko's family. Nobuharu Minato, who lived at the apartment where all of this horror happened, only got handed five to nine years. And his what? parents weren't even charged for ignoring what their son was doing. Yashushi Watanabe wow. had his sentence raised this one from five to the seven US. years. And finally, Joe Agura served eight years. Their sentences that, were all really light like... considering what they'd done. But none of them stayed out of prison for very long, even after they were released because they're still completely horrible people and whenever they changed their names wow. they'd still be doxxed by the public and just consider what they did to yunko was so bad that one of the jurors at the trial fainted uh, during the reports even the judge was afraid that her spirit would still wander lost after she'd gone through so much awful torment i really hope that part isn't true i just hope that yunko fortura finally found some peace in the end this reminds me so much of another super disturbing case we 
we've covered, which was also from Japan. That one was from the late 1990s, known as the Hello Kitty case. It that was, was every wild. bit as disturbing as this one, and in some ways... Yeah, I did a video on it, but... Why was the court so easy on such total My recording monsters? software, let me, That's what, let me just say that. Let me know in the comments below. Yeah, that was the wild case. The other one she's talking about, the Hello Kitty, what ended up happening was I did the video and it didn't record the sound. I did... I tried to resync everything back together. It just wasn't working, so I couldn't release the video, which really sucked. But it was a good video, so if you want to check it out, I will leave it in the link description below. Shout out to Anna Sauce once again. Let me know what you all think on this wild case. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see some more content like this. And until next time, peace out.